Today we're chatting with Jimmy Hocking from the Screaming Jets. The gigs and the music has remained our cathartic world. You know, that, that's been the healing process is to go out and, and play together. I'll tell you how to score a $2 cheesy from Burger Point. And Dan will tell you about last night's Pink Show. Produced on a Awabakul and Warramai land, this is the good stuff on Newcastle Live. This is good. Good. Good stuff. Burger Point Katara is gearing up for a delicious celebration of this year's Leap Day. Burger Point is offering a limited time deal that's sure to delight all burger enthusiasts. $2 cheeseburgers! The offer unlocks at 3pm on the 29th of February for the first 300 cheeseburger enthusiasts. To find out more about the Leap Burgers, head on over to newcastlelive.com.au. This is good. 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 Stuff. The Screaming Jets are currently touring their latest album, Professional Misconduct. We caught up with their guitarist, Jimmy Hocking, ahead of their show at the Toronto Hotel. So you're currently on a national tour. It kicked off in January. What have been some standout moments so far? Well, you know, it's been a weird and wonderful tour for us thus far because you probably know that we lost our great uh, bassist and longtime friend Paul Wazine last year. Mm. So we're still in a, in a, in a feeling of transition. Uh, it's just sort of like move forward and how do we deal with all that. But the standout thing has been really for me that even with that great loss and the success of the album, which has been bittersweet, of course, for us, um, you know, music has, the gigs and the music has remained our cathartic world you know that that's been the healing process is to go out and and play together so we've had um you know a great feeling of bonding behind the scenes in in many ways in the face of what was going to be a, a kind of a negative i wouldn't say we've come through with a positive but it's just been nice to be together and get on stage and and play and do what it is we we still love and, and that may sound corny but that's really been the big thing for me yeah, absolutely. I'm sure it'd make a big difference being together. Um, how's the yeah. dynamics um, changed, like on stage? What's it like not playing with Paul? Well, you know, it is. It's really. It is strange. It's, it's really strange. And uh, you know, I think that not a night goes by where one of us doesn't secretly have like a real moment on stage. You know, mm. uh, but you know, we've had some great people step in and help us out. The most most consistently, um, you know, Paul Elliott, who was a great friend of Paul Wazine's from Newcastle, yeah, awesome. has been coming into play and he's been fantastic. So it's been comforting to have people we know come on board to help us out. Dario Bordelin did did some gigs early in the piece for the uh, the last year's dates, and um, you know, but it's all it's it's everything surrounding that too. It's the whole just travelling together meeting up, you know, the, the breakfast club that we have, all these things, all of that's different. So it's it's not just the one thing. I mean, I laugh yeah. because I feel the presence of Paul is still with uh, uh, with us, but it is it is very different. And, and like anyone in any situation who's lost a loved one, mm. you know, it takes a while for that new normal to really become, you know, something that you can just put in your pocket and keep moving with. Yeah, Absolutely. Look, I really feel for you guys. I couldn't even imagine, you know, going through that as a band. So yeah, my thoughts are with you. Um, Thank you. That's okay. Now, so you've just released this brand new album called Professional Misconduct came out late last yep. year. What's the response been like from fans like in person? You know, that's been a real, uh, very amazing thing. It's been so positive. And uh, I know it's been a while between drinks. It's like seven years since <laughs> yeah. our last original album, uh, which is not to say that we haven't done anything. We did a few things in lockdown. We re-released the first album as an anniversary edition. We did like an EP, the Bitter Pill EP. Uh, so we have done some things. But, you know, when you're older, when you're like a middle-aged bunch of rockers, um, <laughs> time is different. You know, in your 20s, uh, you know, uh, you, you have a lot of time to work on your on your world, your you know, your passion, if you will. Uh, as you get older and there's more responsibilities, I mean, we're all mostly if we're family men as well now, uh, time is a little bit more hard to come by to just spend sitting up half the night writing songs. <laughs> so it, it slows down that creative process. Um, uh, there's a lot more coffee involved, as you probably don't understand. But anyway, um, but, uh, you know, the, the project started, uh, Scotty, our guitar player, and, and Paulie, uh, started writing ideas actually in the lockdown 
period. Uh, they weren't songs. They were just riffs and, and bits and pieces. Paulie always had a bag of lyrics that he was working on. He travelled with an encyclopedia of, of notebooks uh, to the point of ridiculous. So a lot of the stuff came about, you know, or, or, or was – was conceived in lockdown and then we worked it up from there. But unlike every other album that certainly I've done, I've done six of the albums with the band, um, we uh, uh, we really hadn't got things finished when we went in the studio. We were going in the studio with recording time to actually finish the songs as well. Yeah, we, right. we were less prepared than, than any other record I've done. So that wasn't uh, fantastic as far as I was concerned. I, I, I like, I'm a preparer. I'm yeah, a list okay. writer, you know. I want to be, I'm that guy. Yeah. Um, but what happened was uh, that pressure created great art and there was there was actually some real moments of, of like, oh, oh, yeah, like that's amazing that we've come up with that right here kind of on the spot. So that was kind of very interesting and, and, and it made it quite unique. But coming back to the fans' response, I, I, I've been overwhelmed. I literally had people stopping me in the supermarket after the album came out while I'm in shopping dad mode yeah. to talk about the songs. Like, you know, like it was really something. Mm. Uh, um, more so than I can remember even with Chrome, which I really liked as a record as well as our last record. Um, but this one had a real uh, personal touch with people. Maybe that was augmented by the experience of Paul passing. I don't know. I suspect it probably was. Mm. But, you know, it, it has touched a very personal nerve with a lot of people, which has been nice. After the success of this album, right, um, what's next for you guys? What's the plan? Well, you know, we have no solid plan right now. And, in fact, I've been the advocate within the group saying we don't have to decide right here and now what's mm. going to happen because I, I, I kind of wanted to take that stress out of our collective. It's like let's just do the dates that we've that we've got booked. We don't have to think about concepts like replacing Paul. He's not replaceable. Let's just work with people we want to work with. Yeah. Uh, and so we've kind of shunned the idea of coming up with some kind of concrete plan that we can announce. Um, so that's not to say that, you know, we're going to stop or something like that. I, I think the band will continue uh, but I feel like we don't want to make hard decisions right now. We, we've got dates up until uh, I think April, mid-April, like mm-hmm. the Red Hot Summer Tour kicks off in two weeks as well. Um, so we'll be doing all that stuff. We've got to take some time off to do some things behind the scenes. And I think I think that this tour has shown that our happy place is still getting up on stage and, and playing music. So I, I, I feel like we'd be crazy not to continue doing that just for our mental health, if nothing else. Um <laughs> So, uh, you know, I'm sure things will continue, but there'll be probably some rethinking in the middle of the year. Yeah, beautiful. That sounds great. And look, before I let you go, I would love to know, each time that you play Newcastle, you seem to come back to the Toronto Hotel. What is it about this place that you love so much? I kind of I, I don't know how we've settled in. I, I like the vibe of Toronto. It's kind of like the half outdoor kind of yeah. vibe. It's like a mini concert rather than a pub gig. And I quite like the sound of things outdoors. I mean, there's political reasons why sometimes gigs aren't available and uh, stuff like that. But the Toronto is kind of nestled in to become a real classic Jets gig now. We did it New Year's Eve a couple of years ago mm. and we had a huge night down there. So I think we all like coming back. Uh, to the, you know, it's just like they're on the water and it's kind of like this nice hotel. Uh, the staff are cool. Everybody seems to have a good time. We've never seen any trouble there. So I think that um, all of these reasons are why. Yeah, fabulous. All right. Well, we can't wait to see you play there on the 23rd of February. Jimmy, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. What a pleasure. Thanks so much. No problem at all. This is where it's so good. Good stuff. It's been a long time since Newcastle live music fans were treated to a show quite like Pink's concert at McDonald Jones Stadium last night. On top of bungee jumping onto the stage and performing Cirque du Soleil like acrobatics, Pink has a real way of connecting and relating to an audience that few of her contemporaries have achieved. It's a show I won't forget in a long time, and if you head over to newcastlelive.com.au, you can read my full review and check out a few cheeky pics that Bond took. The good stuff. 
that's it for the show today. Thanks heaps to Jimmy Hocking for joining us. Be sure to head along to see the Screaming Jets at the Toronto Hotel and we'll see you tomorrow from 4pm for more of the good stuff. <laughs>